Hey there, Intertubes. Welcome to the 30th episode of Tissues of the Day. I'm your host, Robert Mackay, and joining me is a singing teapot known as David, David Borja. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> No, that's okay. <laughs> we're here with a show about queer relationships and culture, and we're bringing it to you not only from all the podcasts out there, but also on YouTube. So check us out if you want us visually or just audio. And I know with these mugs, it's not easy to watch on video. So that's all right. It's easier David. to watch on video. We're like your two friends <laughs> just hanging out in the, in the corner of the room. You can make us stop talking yeah. if you want. You can make us really loud if you want. <laughs> It's true. You could take all of our video feeds and tile them, make us look like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> That's incestuous because it's a bunch of the same people. <laughs> That's a thing, right? Uh, uh, what? An incestuous on, Brady Bunch? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Brady Bunch that are too close. <laughs> yeah, way too close. Wow, that's so intense. Um, right. It looks like there are Brady Bunch porn videos. Um, oh my gosh and is there like some sort of like what was that what was that um horror film that was all about incest and it was in the like bayou like louisiana area and it was like are you talking about was, like, the hills family have eyes? All... no i don't think it's it that. was something but else the hills have eyes is it was also quite scary <laughs> yeah true <laughs> it's halloween season people so yeah. why shouldn't we be talking about this yeah um it's just david and i today and we're going to be doing another episode, I think our fourth one, of Silly News. Ready for that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We have scoured the internet looking for bizarre, interesting, quirky, funny articles that we're going to riff off of, both in terms of analysis, but also for some improv. Um, and remember that uh, this show is available on Bitbutton, the YouTube channel, so go over there and subscribe. Uh, and also you can find us just in audio using podcasts. And we're supported by lovely Patreon subscribers such as Vicky and Elias. So please join us. And if you like our stuff, drop us a subscription, a tip, whatever helps us, supports us. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> we want your money. Give us your money. <laughs> we're like a college. We're like a college that won't leave you alone decades after <laughs> graduating. Yeah, and, and we're one of those colleges that we're okay if you give us so much money, we'll let your kid in. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> we, we will be bribed. It, yeah, we'll gladly accept bribes if you want your if you we want if you want your child on this random podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we we're, we're not judgmental of you wanting yeah. to throw a lot of money to get your kid into a good education we can give that to yeah them. although i will uh i will babysit <laughs> oh god i'll just babysit david <laughs> will he's desperate although I, you shouldn't be so desperate because you're now working full time yeah 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 no but i i genuinely i genuinely i don't know i think kids are fun i i'm good at babysitting i've worked at i've worked at summer camps it's a whole thing david <laughs> after we were just talking about incest based horror films uh, i don't know what to think about it. it's not the time what do you mean it's not the time to sell my babysitting ability oh my gosh yeah don't know i have on your boundaries CV. i have great boundaries <laughs> ask you do ask you're anybody actually... about it you're very good about not only establishing them, but like educating people on them. Thank you. Yeah, wow, what right. a fucked up way to start. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, little bit of fucked up. Um, that's fine, because you know what's all fucked up? The news out there. Oh, well, yeah. We found a few <laughs> articles out there. A few things that are offbeat, that are dumb, that are shocking. You name it, but it was fun. So... Oof. We each pulled some articles together, uh, myself too, David one, because I'm a overachiever. Uh, Please, <laughs> no, I feel like I talk so much more in episodes, so I'm glad that you are taking two articles. <laughs> okay, okay, good, good. <laughs> well, then I'm going to let you spin off our first article, David. Introduce us to the first and weird and bizarre thing that you're finding out there in modern day news. Convicted Sheriff gives thumbs up review of the jail that he ran when he was in prison there <laughs> let me say that Go one more on. time <laughs> convicted sheriff gives thumbs up review of the jail he ran when he was in prison there wait, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Uh -huh. So he was running it. Did he get arrested and convicted while working there or did he leave? I don't know if he was still working there. So let me just but he definitely did at one point, but he definitely worked there for decades, Robert. So 
uh, let's see. Limestone Sheriff's <sighs> Office shows Sheriff Mike Blakely following his arrest on theft and ethics charges in Athens, Alabama. Speaking with the media in October 2021, uh, Blakely gave glowing reviews to the Limestone County Jail, where he spent time in custody, even though he ran it for decades. All right. So he's quoted as saying, best jail in the state of Alabama. That's another thing I'm proud of. Blakely said during a news conference outside his attorney's office in Huntsville, the food was real good. The staff took very good care of me. So around the middle of this article, I was like, wait, so was he just given special treatment? Like, did he not actually go into the jail? Um, but it, it goes on. He says uh, he was incarcerated. Shoot. Hang on. Yeah, wearing his cowboy hat and boots, Blakely said he had fewer privileges than jail trustees and denied receiving special treatment from his former staff. So the crime that he committed is very interesting, though, because... Wasn't it theft he was and taking, something else? He was taking no-interest loans from the jail fund that he ran that held prisoners' money and was stealing $4,000 from just a campaign account, which I guess is what he used whenever <gasps> he was running for, like the position again he was in his 10th straight term at the time of his removal from oh. office so you're right he was working there when he was removed making him so he okay. was alabama's longest serving sheriff when he was removed from this job this story's <laughs> crazy robert <laughs> the longest serving sheriff was embezzling for how long <laughs> however like 10th straight 10 term. years because he had 10 terms so i guess a term is one year it could be one year it could be two years I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how the sheriff system works, what the rotation is. Golly. But that's insane. Their longest running one is probably the most corrupt. Go figure. Defund yeah. the police, right? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it says he ran it for decades. So it was just like, I don't know. It, it really... It, it's like, it's a funny story, right? But it's also like... Uh, and he's not going to stay there. He's not going to stay in the jail that he ran. He's sentenced to three years and he'll eventually go to the Franklin County jail, which is about 60 miles from the jail that he ran. So it's like, I think he will eventually have the prison experience. <laughs> um, and it won't be like, whatever, just like sleeping at your workplace <laughs> or something. I, There's it's so many so layers insane. to this. It's a good one. It's a very good article. I want to first stop. I didn't even know that jails were reviewed. My guess is oh. that most inmates don't want to be in there and don't want to review their prison. How many of them are like, oh, I really want to go into this one. No, so no, I'm no. going to do like. Yeah, I think so. Know? It's not like a Google business review or like a Yelp review, because I think it says it was comments to another news publication. But he was still like giving it a thumbs up, <laughs> like best state in the uh, best jail in the state of Alabama. <laughs> so it's like, well, and, and I, I would know. be I'd be shocked if the interviewer, like the the whatever journalist or whatever, was like going to him asking, like they were probably wondering about his crime and what he did and how it got him in there. As exactly. Opposed to like, what'd you think of the jail? But he decided to thumbs up it because he ran it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing is like, do the people that he's in prison with realize why he's there like they were like mm -hmm. he was taking their money <laughs> kind of thing and he yeah. was like yeah being punished for that and also the staff like how do the staff want to treat him ethically if literally everybody knows why he's there <laughs> they all worked there they all see the same records <laughs> Well, and he's the guy who's embezzling money from their operations. From the, so their I find it very jail. weird. <laughs> I feel weird that he's like, I didn't ask for any special treatment because I was embezzling tons of money from. <laughs> like, of course, you're not going to ask for special treatment. It probably required more money to be taken from the jail that you were stealing money from. Oh, my God. And then, yeah. And then I think why I was also like cringing a bit was it was just like, you know, just like this article is just soaked in privilege, right? It's just like, oh, yeah, so much Sopping. that dude, <laughs> that guy who ran a jail and then didn't suffer at all for it. Meanwhile, we have so many people wrongly imprisoned on like, you know, weed charges or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. To just give people some like activist reading if they're curious check out the brennan center for justice um they have a great newsletter mm -hmm. and they're doing some awesome activism related to criminal justice reform so that stuff oh is good. good yeah 
Oh, hold on. Wait, so does the article indicate whether or not... So he, it sounds like he was charged in the sense that that's what put him in jail. Right. But like, what was his sentence? How much for like 10 years of embezzlement I know, right? did he get? Uh, it was three years in custody. A judge ruled that he'll be held at the Franklin County Jail. Um, yeah, which three again... Three years in custody. Yeah. In his own jail. It, no, no, different jail. He ran the Limestone oh, okay. County and he's going to the Franklin County. And that just sounds like that sounds like somebody who is like enacting their privilege of like you could I could just picture him like while he's getting transferred from his own jail to this new one. And he's just pointing to the cameras he'd be like best sloppy Joe's in town. I know, you know man. Pulling him away. He, like, he literally is quoted as saying um, <laughs> some even offered to have him. F- uh, yeah. To have food delivered to the jail for him. Quote. I said, no, I eat the jail food because I love it because I've been eating it for the last 38 years. Close quote. (laughs) Wow. Who's offering to send him food? Uh, He, um, I don't know, the the inmates, it sounds like. Oh, my gosh. The inmates. The inmates, yeah, in like commissary were saying, I guess must have been offering him somewhat better food. <laughs> because he I guess he made he well he was there for 10 years maybe he made really good relationships with inmates 1 through 30 or whatever you know and they were just like he's been the best sheriff ever possibly he made sure that I got double helpings of cabbage possibly yeah maybe there is a world where this is just like chill jail <laughs> and like they if people chill actually chill. don't suffer that much in this prison maybe maybe oh my gosh. and he's actually just a cool dude um but I don't know <laughs> If I've learned anything about white privilege and the boomer generation is that sometimes yeah. uh, they're not super realistic. Uh. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I've got my article coming up next and it's a little bit of ASMR by the news because this is all sorts of fun as elephants have fun squashing pumpkins in Oregon Zoo tradition. First and foremost, I don't know what First it means and foremost Oregon most. Zoo tradition. <laughs> Force most, forest most. <laughs> What is Oregon Zoo tradition? I guess they just squash it before they ate it out in Mm. Oregon. But these elephants appear to be enjoying stomping squashes and then eating them once the fun is over. Mm. I'll rewind this a little bit and be kissing closely. Oh my. Yeah, and then break the camera. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't broken enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I would do the same thing. Now they're just having fun booting it around. Mm. And then they eat the insides. Yeah. Imagine if those were skulls. <laughs> Dark. <laughs> they're so cute. About there. So that's that's what they do at the Oregon Zoo. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean I got it largely for the audio. But I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's days where the news is so slow. <laughs> they're, Sorry. they're just like, this is what we're going to use. We're going to use some random bit from the zoo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like elephants are so smart is the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we really underestimate what animals do to entertain themselves. Right. Because I think it's. I don't know. It's very similar to people like a lot of stress relief for people is a form of play is a form of releasing energy. Um, Mm -hmm. And like animals need that, too. Like the classic case is like dogs and cats. If if they are a breed that needs to play and you don't give them stuff to play with, they will destroy your house and they will be upset. They will like 
eat poorly, whether it's too much or too little, like it's a whole thing. So I'm glad that yeah. they're doing an activity like this for these elephants. Cause like, you know, I'm not, get moody. I'm not uh, the biggest fan of zoos. Um, but I know that there are some really good people trying to make zoos better. Right. And it seems like that's what they were yeah. going for here. Yeah, I'm very torn on the zoo situation because I can understand how there's like some animals that really just do not do well in captivity. Mm -hmm. But then there's some that are okay, like insects. I don't think they really care. <laughs> but mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. And and I just, I love seeing, this is a demonstration of an intelligence, right? This is a demonstration that they are more capable than we think and that they play around and they like, they enjoy themselves before they partake in their foods. So they play with their food. They too, play with their like, food. <laughs> I do. I do. All right. I'm going to go to my last article. Yeah. Stop sharing this one. Boop. And you ready for this? I think so. I haven't looked at this ahead of time, oh. so you're just getting my live reaction. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is it. Here's our title for the next article. Police admit. Another police officer. story. <laughs> yeah. Another police story. And they admit that the officer did make a mistake paddling. Oh, hold on. This title is bad. Okay. Police admit officer did mistake paddling pool of goldfish for sharks. Nice. So that's nice. That's, yeah, that's where he started. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> what a dummy. <laughs> a viral news story. Uh, what did the rounds about a pool of sharks circling a Christmas tree centerpiece being found inside a Sussex flag? So there was a Christmas tree inside of a pool <laughs> to begin with. Okay. This is a Sussex in the UK. Police inspector Darren Taylor tweeted about the discovery in Hayward's Heath on Friday about after being called to a ground floor apartment, which gained plenty of media interest. He said, just when you think you heard it all, team attended a premises over the weekend only to discover an eight foot swimming pool in the front room. In the swimming room, apart from the water, were small sharks swimming around an artificial Christmas tree. I kid you not. Uh -huh. But as it turns out, <laughs> the so this wasn't is from a, a distance. <laughs> no, he saw this in person in the room of a house. So obviously, unless he was in a mansion, somebody he was wrong. These sharks. <laughs> <laughs> it's so goofy. Ins yeah, it was in a tweet that was later deleted, uh, and the Sus Sussex police then said later in a statement to Metro.co.uk, it has had the chance to review the incident in more detail following recent coverage. So oh he basically just was not paying attention or did not know what sharks looked like and made a very false claim about what was inside this house. Yeah, what? Okay, so because when you first read the title, I pictured it as like a school of fish kind of in a cloud together that might have looked like a shark from a distance. But so you're mm -hmm. saying he saw like just a large version of a goldfish and thought maybe that was a shark. Yeah, maybe it was koi. <laughs> Does it say the tweet that was deleted or like have any quote from what he actually said? That was a quote. So the quote was is when he's like, just when you think you heard it all, team attended a premises over the weekend, only discovered an eight foot swimming pool in the front room. In the swimming pool, apart from water, were small sharks swimming around and an artificial Christmas tree. I kid you not. God. <laughs> small <laughs> sharks swimming around. Oh, mm -hmm. Do you want to know what the forces, like the, the police department's response were, was yeah, about yeah, why yeah. it happened? They said that the officers were called to a neighborhood dispute and not a disturbance as had been reported. Uh, so it was a dispute between neighbors and wasn't a disturbance, which I guess there's a difference. Yes. Several types of goldfish well, yeah. or fish. If I can interrupt for a second, a disturbance yeah. is like loud noise, like disturbing the peace or someone being belligerent kind of outside in public. While a dispute mm -hmm. is when two people are arguing and then like one person basically calls the police of like, hey, this is out of hand. Basically, yeah, they're like oh, trying okay. to use the police as counselors. Um <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> well, if you can't afford it, might as well make use of other public figures. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so don't. Okay. I, I. Sorry, this is so annoying of me, but I actually don't believe in calling the police to settle personal disputes. But anyway. <laughs> oh, God, no, no. I, I say that purely uh, in a uh, facetious way. <laughs> 
Um, several types of goldfish or fish commonly kept as pets were found in a children's paddling pool fitted with pumps and filters, not a swimming pool. And there were no sharks. <laughs> so basically it was just a paddling pool with some goldfish in it. And he thought they were sharks. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. The, so the landlords was it... were contacted. Sorry. Hmm? Uh, did you say if it's like kind of in ground or was it an above ground? thing of water no this was like this was in like a house i'm assuming just like normal floors huh. that they had a kid's paddling pool that they stuck an artificial tree in the middle of and then had fish going around <laughs> it and the landlords okay. were contacted over concern over the volume of water in the property but there was no concern over the welfare of the fish okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was my next question yeah. was what was this dispute <laughs> uh, yeah it seems like the neighbors probably had a dispute don't put that with much water inside <laughs> Weird. That's, just, that's far too large of a paddling pool yeah that is not strata uh <laughs> regulated size yeah are there strata for neighborhoods I don't think for neighborhoods, but for buildings, for sure. Yeah. I think for the stratas for the neighborhoods, it's just like the city. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I know like a neighborhood watch is, does that kind of move up to the city? Like, do people kind of organize that among themselves? Because uh, that's a different thing than a strata. I don't know. Yeah. When it's a, like a, like a, um, when it's a neighborhood watch, I think that's a neighborhood organized thing. It's not a strata. Yeah. I think that's just like independent of a strata. Mm. Mm. But maybe not. Maybe there is like formalized, you know, like in townhouse collections in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Yeah. Cause I'm just trying to think like, what business did this person have <laughs> trying to fight somebody on how much water was in their home? <laughs> Okay, now, David, you've been a renter for a long time. I'd be shocked if you haven't come in contact with that one neighbor who just has nothing better to do but get involved in your life. Well, well, uh, yeah. I've been that neighbor. <laughs> ah, hold on. No, you had a scenario. You had a situation. Remember when you first moved into oh, your previous oh, home? Okay, okay, okay. Somebody was making too much noise. What was the noise, David? <laughs> I've told this story before. I will not be dragged I know, again. But more people need to hear it. <laughs> it's in the gut, butt, penis episode. I was masturbating too loud, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the neighbor like that shared a wall with me was like, "Um, you guys are always <laughs> making noise." <laughs> it wasn't those two things weren't related. It was more the sounds of moving no. and like hammering on the walls. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I was, this was a. Uh, she used the term always when you had been living there how long? Five days. <laughs> oh. um, yes, I forgot about that story. No, but I have been the person like getting up in a neighbor's business because I used to have somebody living above me and they were so loud, Robert, like at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. starting parties, yeah. not having parties until that hour starting parties in the middle of oh the night gosh. sometimes like during the middle of the week and like uh yeah it was a whole like saga <laughs> i was gonna say chapter but it was a saga in 2018 or so um where like i even tried recording the sound but like there's actually it's actually really hard to prove with a video or even audio file that your neighbors upstairs are too loud do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like if, yeah, if I record yeah. a video and I just like point it at the ceiling, like it could be a doctored video. There's no way to really like prove that yeah. the sound is coming from above. Same thing if I'm recording uh, just audio, like it could be anything. It could be like just fake. Um, so when I Especially sent with audio, because yeah. you don't have a ch the, the location could be fake. Yeah. It could just, yeah. And so the like landlord, when I sent it to them, I was like, these are examples of how loud the neighbors are being. The landlord called me and was like, I can't accept this. And the letter that you sent, because I did send a letter <laughs> about like trying to just have some quiet on weekends or quiet at late at night. Sorry, quiet yeah. late at night on weekdays. That was the biggest thing. Um, yeah. But the. God, am I becoming a Karen? Is that what's happening? Oh, wait. <laughs> no. No. I, like, I think since then, I kind of have let it go. I don't think I would do something like that again. But, um, yeah, this landlord was like, I got your 
uh, message. But then these tenants, they said that they will they will sue for harassment because of the letter that you sent them and like bothering them <laughs> to be quiet. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> like, I was so upset. <laughs> I was, can't win. Yeah, I was so upset that like me sending a letter as a noise complaint got turned into me harassing them. <laughs> That's, that's how is that how is that harassment is li you literally sent one right i sent one letter and i just like cited the bylaw about like quiet enjoyment of a home after like certain hours and it was just like nope i was being harassing i, th I thought i was being respectful well, it was yeah it was wild no no that is not harassment it's not like you sent <laughs> multiple in short periods of time you literally took the first step that any window would take which is to be like hey by the way you're making too much noise Rather oh, yeah. than going to the strata or going to the cops. Yeah, like, and I wasn't, one. right, like we were doing that in person for a long time too. Like we were actually just like walking up and saying like, hey, can you keep it down? And it just became a pattern. So the letter was me escalating a little bit, but I was still like transparent. I was like, I am in this room. My name is David. You can talk to me whenever. Like I'm not, because I have been in yeah. those situations where you're sending anonymous letters in a home and it's just like, yeah. Ew. Um, but the, I do have one more story about this where this is a very police themed episode. It is. Um, I heard domestic abuse in that same apartment once and uh. I had to call the police. I heard like a like a and then like thump, 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 thump. and I was like, whoa. Oh, no. um, and then I heard like yelling and then a person like running around in the apartment and it was just really intense. And so I called the police and had them like check it out. And then things got just like oh. dead silent. Uh, like when the police came by and it was just please like, don't use the term oh, dead silent well, in that I, context <laughs> but that's how it felt it was really scary yeah. um oh, so yeah that was just a weird weird environment to live in i had to do that once uh and first i need to clarify was this your place near main street yeah yeah this was near main street in okay yeah no i had my place on seymour i had to call in for a domestic situation once and like the cops showed up and they buzzed me and they're like, let us in. And they went, and they knocked on the door and talked to the, like people from the apartment. And it wasn't classically, I know it's especially with a man and a woman, the, the expectation it's the man. It was actually the woman mm -hmm. who like in what was being shouted sounded like she was attacking him. Whoa. And so it was really weird for me, but I was like, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, it's like domestic attack. So I was like, yeah. I had to call and I did. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the thing is like domestic abuse is completely different from a dispute, you know, and we talked about this in the consent episode, I think, where I was just like, mm -hmm. it would be great if we just had a publicly funded like crisis counselors and like people who would show up and actually know what to do to deescalate um, those kinds of situations as opposed to the police, because I, I truly don't believe the police I don't think people should be arrested for domestic abuse, uh, except in like extreme cases. I think people need therapy in domestic abuse situations, you know? I think there's a lot of people arrested for a lot of things who need therapy and they never get it. They just get thrown in jail. Yeah. Yeah. So again, fuck the police <laughs> or defund the police, <laughs> like you said. We're, we got a theme going mm -hmm. on. Speaking of themes, we've got some themes we don't know about. So coming up next, we have a little piece called This Just In. And we're going to be improvising a little bit where each of us have collected an article that the other person doesn't know about that is news-based. And the other person has to relay it like they know it in detail and that they're relaying a This Just In important bit of news. David got one for me. I got one for David. And uh, we're going to start off with David. You're going to be the first one up. So you ready for this? This just in, sexy in quotes, Bernie Sanders outfit could be scariest costume this Halloween. <laughs> okay, so I've just read the headline and uh, <laughs> commentators across the world are, are noticing the uh, long forgotten meme about Bernie Sanders was it forgotten or just fondly remembered from the previous inauguration in January where Bernie Sanders iconically showed up with mittens and a very thick winter coat and his mask looking slightly disgruntled while the ceremony was going on? Now, there's so much shade in this headline <laughs> where it's like, 
Okay, so people have made a sexy version of uh sorry, sorry. Um people have made a sexy version of this outfit, including the mittens and the trench coat. And uh great, it joins the canon of many sexy Halloween costumes like sexy Scooby Doo, <laughs> sexy um and mostly that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's know? another one. Sexy fucking SpongeBob. <laughs> Those are not popular sexy costumes. It's like fucking sexy schoolgirl, sexy maid, sexy cop. Like those are the classics. I don't know why cartoon characters <laughs> came to mind. I'm losing it here. Okay, so I'm I'm here on location, David, and I'm seeing so many other sexy costumes that are just. T- destroying town's purity. We're talking about sexy Pringles can, <laughs> sexy um, crab, yeah, S- sexy piranha plant from Mario. Oh my god! Sexy cheese block. It's sexy cheese block. <laughs> so- it's sexy Chester the cheetah. For me, it's all about the cartoon characters. <laughs> Uh, uh, sexy, that would actually okay. Um, I'm not like I'm not fucking around. That would be really fun to do. Um, <laughs> to do a leopard print bodysuit with like big bright sneakers and a tail and sunglasses <laughs> and being sexy Chester the cheetah. Oh man, that's so funny uh, to me. David. I I want us to find a third person and do sexy snap crackle and poppers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and they'd just be three yeah. really twinky like yeah cartoon characters. snap crackle popper rice krispies <laughs> <laughs> and it's just them all taking poppers inside a bowl of rice krispies <laughs> be great. yeah yeah and they're all just like mm, then the sensations like as the like <laughs> <laughs> like the crackling noises are happening. <laughs> I've never done poppers. Do they make you more sensitive to like sound? Um, maybe. I think it's more about feeling. Uh, it basically dilates the blood vessels, so okay. you like blood rushes, and it's there's a whole thing behind it. <sighs> there's a whole thing behind it. Tell me more. Uh, hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. We ready for the next one? Okay, hang on. I need to read a little bit more of this article because also, yeah, it's okay. just so shady. Of <laughs> fucking like, mm-hmm. yeah, because the 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 headline is like low key implying that Bernie Sanders isn't sexy, and it's just like okay, it's a little unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, his infamous outfit from Joe Biden's inauguration. Okay, the look is meant for you to be a viral internet meme. Okay. And then memes and jokes. Great. Okay. It didn't even come with the chair. This is simply a coat. Okay. Hot. Okay. All right. I don't, yeah. It's not scary. I don't know. It's just like funny to me. <laughs> I think they mean scary in terms of like just scary how ridiculous it is. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm just like, what is the world coming to where this is a Halloween costume? <laughs> <laughs> scary exactly. um but yes That's please next article. my my debt level is scary yeah yeah exactly you know what's sexy to me forgiving loans <laughs> you know what's sexy to me fiscal responsibility <laughs> you know it's sexy to me prison reform it just keeps coming back to that <laughs> defunding police <laughs> um all right your turn my turn okay all right here it comes Article number two. Never seen this. Clicking on it now. This Justin, straight from AP News, North Korean soldier in blue generates buzz on social media. That's right, people. We've got something coming straight from the North of Korea. And it seems that a soldier clad in a super tight blue outfit in a state media photo has generated a buzz on social media, with some calling him a superhero, a Captain DPRK, or Rocket Man. He was among nearly 30 soldiers. You're just reading the article, photo. Robert. You're not improvising. I am. Wait. No, I am. Hold on. <laughs> who posed with leader Kim Jong-un. 
The reason he was there is because he was dressed to look like a bullet. And it is tradition in North Korea to always inaugurate a ceremony by shooting a human bullet out of a tank. Hence the coloring. He matched the colors of the Korean flag. North Korean flag. So this man was loaded into the cannon of the tank and shot out. People were in awe, but also sad. Mm -hmm. I have my representative on the ground in North Korea. David, what is happening? Robert, you're not the only one who made that observation that he looks like a human bullet. Uh, someone was tweeted say, yeah, South Korean Twitter users were saying he looks like a human cannonball or the North Korean equivalent of Captain America. Others called him, like you said, superhero, Captain DPRK. Um, Jeffrey Lewis, an expert at Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey, tweeted that it seems that this man was the parachutist. It explains everything, it's doesn't it? <laughs> That explains only half the story. We're also hearing that this is a new form of weapon that North Korea has been developing in order to attack other countries. Can you corroborate that claim? You know, uh, I can't. <laughs> I just can't. I, I don't mean to be a I no but. Um, but there is like a funny, you know, what do we do with North Korea, right? Like, I don't want to sound racy when I when I make fun of North Korea, but also like we have to, right? It's just like such a backwards part of the world that everyone just kind of like looks at and hopes they don't do anything too crazy. It It's just, but that seems to be what comes out every time a new news release comes out. It seems to enter into the realm of crazy. It's always like, look at the insane the thing they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, it so really this is, is by no means different. I want to know what he actually was doing. Why is he dressed like that? What was he being used for? Is if he's a parachutist, where he's being shot out of? What plane? What device? Why a parachute? Is this ceremony? <laughs> right. Uh, well, let me see if I can look at a video real quick. North Korean parachutist. Let's see if something comes up. Yeah, because uh, so this happened. Air show. This mm. happened during basically North Korea puts on these public displays of force, I guess. So it shows like kind of incredible human feats by these martial artists. Sometimes people like lying on glass or like trying to choke each other or attacking each other just to show how strong their martial artists are. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's meant to inspire loyalty. Um, and like fear in both the population but all, yeah people lying on a bed of nails it's just like it's just wild and i don't know if it's it's like a patriotism thing but it is also like to try to strike fear into the hearts of people around the world it's propaganda man <laughs> well that's what they're known for that's yeah. how they're running an entire country yeah Oh my. Yeah. All right. So thank you. you <laughs> thank you for, I, I did put you in dicey territory by trying to make you improvise about North Korea. No. <laughs> it's fine. I am uh, yes. And all the way. <laughs> all right. We ready for the last one. Yeah. The intimate report. Oh, for sure. All right. So in this one, folks out there in the intertubes, a randomly generated image is going to be used as a prompter for what we're going to call an intimate report. And what we're going to be doing is acting through as though we're a reporter on the subject who has an in-depth knowledge on this topic and affinity for the subject matter. So they're really like, they know it, they've been studying it. This is something that they really have put time to put an expose on this report based off a randomly generated image. So I have a random image generator. Should I share that, David? Uh, oh yeah, I mean I have one too. So I can host first. Oh, you want to use or yours? Be the subject first. What do you want? You go first. As hosting. Yes. Okay. Cool. One sec. Uh, oh boy. All right. I will cut this. Just so I send you the picture. I always forget how to attach. All right, there is a picture in the chat that will be for this first scene. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. clears throat> okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's Intimate Report. Tonight we have a story about coziness. We have a story about trust. A story about love. I'm here with sex therapist uh, uh, Mackenzie Pfeiffer, who has a lot to say about cozy vibes and cuffing season this fall. Mackenzie... You've brought me here into your, I don't want to say sex dungeon, because it is cozier than that, but it definitely is giving me sex dungeon vibes. Uh, My name is David, by the way. You can call me David. (laughs) Hello, David. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, You would be partly right. This used to be a sex dungeon, but I've changed up my ways. My ways of being a dominatrix are in the past. Now we're calling it a cuddle dungeon. Fascinating. So you were a dominatrix. Mm. Um, We do actually. Mm. uh, So for the viewers at home, we met one of um, Mackenzie's clients as a dominatrix. And here's what they had to say together. Let's cut to that. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, like it's just so stressful running a business but Mackenzie just made me relax, you know? And what parts of your body did Mackenzie help you relax? Oh, no, you're still Mackenzie. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's like a duo I'm sorry, interview. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Um, this is uh, this is one of my best clients. He, uh, he really came in uptight. Uptight emotionally, physically, spiritually. And I just let him release. Release from head to toe. Yeah, she actually, like... She almost cut my head off at one point, and I was like, whoa, that's a little kinky for me. But it was definitely exciting and relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. You see, my client really had a thing for guillotines. He loved the French history and French culture, and he's like, I want to I wanna be there. I want to escape my life, and I want to get to back to old medieval period France. So what did I do? Brought him the guillotine. Yeah, there really, you know, there really is something about like mm, just just putting your putting your hands in those two little what do you call them? What do you call them, babe? Holes. Holes. <laughs> <laughs> putting your hands in those two little holes and then putting your head in the bigger hole and you just see that big knife above you. It really is a rush. Um, it's also known as stockades. Stockades. Thank you. <laughs> I was gonna call them girders, but that's like that's something else, right? That's something you put around your <laughs> midsection. Yeah, girder. Anyway, yeah. So Mackenzie's great at her at great at her job. Uh, cut back to the yeah. to the interview thing. Yeah, I really enjoyed that client. That one really set me on the map and brought me some of my other clients. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. You know that that high level business world. They would all be pretty connected with each other, and they would have a lot to mm-hmm. share. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know. But so I you changed from after... dominatrix sing. What's the word? Yeah. Dominatrixing? Uh, in, into a cuddle matrix. Ooh. Okay. That that's that sounds lovely. So okay, so how does the how does the do you dominate people into cuddling or does the dom subdynamic totally change? Well, I'm still in control and I am still dominating, but it is no longer through intimidation and degradation. Instead, I like to use pure kind intimacy cuddling closeness and camaraderie the three c's kindness closeness and camaraderie (laughs) i love that i have (laughs) dyslexia (laughs) that's wonderful so you find so you find people are often disarmed and and made more submissive just by being kind to them yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, the best way to get somebody to trust you is to be vulnerable yourself and to get close. And then when they start showing their vulnerability, that's where you go for the <clears throat> kill. I see. Fascinating. There's something very feline about that approach. It's like lulling something. It's almost like playing with your food, you know? And I don't want to turn mm-hmm. you into another animal because you were a spider in the last intimate report, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> I wonder if you had anything to say about being a bit of a, you know, a bit of a kitten. Well, I always thought that the cat was the perfect example of how to be a cuddle. The what? Sorry. Because the cuddle matrix. The perfect. <laughs> perfect cuddle matrix <laughs> yes because when you think about it a cat is the perfect thing it keeps you close it keeps you cozy it keeps you um, comfortable enough to start opening up mm. but you then realize they really don't give a shit about you and they will own you by the end of it do you know what i mean i know exactly what you mean wow i love this <laughs> okay um <laughs> thank you Ladies, gentlemen, distinguished guests for listening to tonight's Intimate Report. If you want to look into Mackenzie Pfeiffer's services, you can uh, follow her on social media. Is there anywhere else uh, they can look you up? No, any social media. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Fiverr. TikTok? Angel, Angel Fire. <laughs> Geo Cities. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for being tonight's subject, Mackenzie. Of course. Scene. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. Ooh, I got the amazing. giggles I today. Can't believe, I can't believe you found this random cat mm -hmm. that's just yawning in between ah. somebody's crotch. <laughs> oh yeah, and I that's gotta amazing. yeah, I gotta make sure to save that image and make sure to put it up. Why did it generate screen. two? I don't know. That this website has just been generating two of them. Oh. All right. Amazing. Your turn. All right. I'm going to generate one. Mm -hmm. You ready for this? Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Mm, this one. Here we are. Ready for this? Yep. Generating an image. Oh. And there we have it. And welcome to NPR News. I'm your host, John McTavish. And I'm here covering one of my most thought after, sought after, and caught after topics, and that is the castles of southern Germany's Bavarian region, the castles of Lord Wunschtheimen Ruckenstein, who built some of the most elaborate, expensive, and extensive castles in the south of Germany. These are some of the castles that entered into an era of controversy for the king because not only did he build these all, but he built them using the hands of his own citizens and the dollars of his own citizens. So we decided to go back in time and to bring forward one of the actual citizens who built one of these castles and to get an insight into how he felt about building through his hands through his sweat, and through his own tax dollars, the castles for his own king. If you would please introduce yourself. <coughs> Hello, yes, I... As you can tell, he's very sick. I... They were not well cared after. I was not well cared after. Uh, my name is Hans. Thank you, Hans. Yes, the process of building this particular castle was definitely... Definitely one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, I don't know how much uh, in-depth you want to uh, get into. I heard that the impact not only touched you personally, but also that of your family. How was your family impacted um, by all this work? They are all estranged. They said I should not have signed on to that contract for t the 10 years that it took. And uh, I am no longer in touch with most of them because they... Uh, they believe it was an unforgivable mistake. Yes, I heard that you are uh, divorced from your wife. Mm -hmm. Your two children uh, disowned you. Mm -hmm. And even your pet animals walked out the front door shitting as they left. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we were, uh, we were low on money. So we were just kind of feeding them paper. And paper is not very nutritious for pets. So when they eat that, it usually comes out as like this weird, like... Um, have you ever tried to uh, like pick up a wet newspaper? You know how it just kind of like disintegrates? Just like imagine that yes. just kind of like falling out of a like yogurt machine. That's kind of what was happening. <laughs> 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 that's what my pets were doing physically and that's what my family did emotionally. They just kind of let they just let the love just kind of shit out. I I'm I'm really upset about I'm really upset about this 
this Thank this you. castle and I don't even get to visit. No, and that is where the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back in this scenario. We heard that you and the other citizens forced to build that castle revolted. How did that revolt unfold? Well, you see, with great suffering, there's often great wisdom. And I think that this revolt was one of the highlights of my life, to be completely honest with you. Um, me and about 2,000 of the ex- Builders got together and we surrounded the castle. We put it under siege um, back mm. in, uh, what was it? It was like 91, I think. And we stopped anybody from... 1791 or 1991? From 1891. <laughs> How old am I? Who's to say? So... We we got we got together and we put the castle under siege, so nobody was allowed to leave and nothing was allowed to go in. And that last that siege lasted. You're not going to believe this. That siege lasted three weeks. They had three weeks of provisions wow. within that castle, just to give you an idea of the wealth. Astounding, and it must have impacted you heavily emotionally to be sieging the very thing that you built in order to access the king. Yes, yes. You know it. It really. It really makes you question everything. If you weren't already questioning things after 10 years of building and then two years of like just being bored and then that after like a year 13, finally like trying to take back something, something that was yours. It, it Yeah, it really, uh, I don't know if I will ever recover from this. I think I'm going to start with my family for sure. Isn't it going to be difficult to return to your family knowing that your wife later slept with the very king that you attacked? I was not aware of this. Uh, how did you hear about this? In my investigative report, I looked into the king's mm, dalliances and discovered that not only did he sleep with your wife, he also took in your pets, cured them of their shitting problem. <laughs> and This isn't children funny. As well. I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I lost I lost my shit after you said coming out like stuff from a yogurt. <laughs> I want my wife back. <laughs> oh my god, what a weird scene. <laughs> That's amazing. I want my wife back. Oh, oh that's beautiful. Ooh. Stop sharing. There we have it. All right. Let me get back to her. <laughs> <laughs> episode of the day well there we have it that brings us to the end of the show david and i we're so glad you could join us david what were your takeaways from the things that we investigated today um fuck the police uh seize the means of production mm. um communism mm. is alive and well it's just waiting <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my takeaway is that David and I have a hard time keeping a straight face if it has anything to do with poop <laughs> or animals. Yep. So yep, that's, that's my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you so much for listening to Tissues of the Day. Uh, we upload as frequently as you can, so keep an eye out for us. Uh, you can find David at BitButton on Instagram and YouTube. And you can find me on Instagram only, Robert F. Mackay. Um, but you can find me. It's easy. You can find both of us. And BitButton has also all sorts of other things in addition to Tissues of the Day. So make sure to subscribe. Click on that little uh, dingy dingy bell bell. And make sure you don't miss any of the new content that hits that channel. If you love this show, you can also support us at patreon.com slash bitbutton. And you can also find us on platforms for podcasts including google apple and spotify or just on youtube so what i have to say to you stay wet internet shimmering that's not well i guess yeah that's a form of wetness <laughs> sure thank you david <laughs> and good night and we're done